Hi, welcome to Siva Labs. In this video, we are going to look at better alternatives to generate Spring Boot applications. If you ever work with Spring Boot, you might most likely know about Spring Initializer. Spring Initializer is a tool to generate Spring Boot based projects and it is built by the Spring Boot team itself. So here we can select the project metadata and then choose what status we want to use. Let's say we want to build a Spring Boot based REST API and use a relational database like Postgres in the backend. Then we can choose Spring Web, Spring Data JPA, Postgres and let's say we want to use test containers for testing. Once we select the starters, we can generate the project and import into our IDE and start working on it. This is already a great developer experience. However, if we explore the project that is going to be generated and in the palm.xml, all the status that we selected got added here. And if we look into source, there is only a Spring Boot main entry point class and an empty application.properties file and a skeleton for Spring Boot test. That's all it's going to generate. But when we think about typical Spring Boot based REST API, there are a few things that we commonly use, such as we want to configure some uh, course configuration like cross origin resource sharing configuration. And also we want to configure Swagger based API documentation. And also if you are hosting your code into GitHub, you might most likely use GitHub Actions for doing CI/CD, And also uh, we want to use Docker and Docker Compose based uh, configurations for local development. So there are a lot of common things that we want to use, but it is not going to be generated by Spring Initializer. So that's why in the Java community, there are few other alternatives built so that developers can generate Spring Boot based application with batteries included instead of starting from scratch all the way. One of the most popular and very well known and very powerful uh, Spring Boot project generator is jhipster. jhipster is a very powerful application generator not only Spring Boot based applications, you can use jhipster to generate uh, Quarkus and Micronaut applications as well. Also, you can use jhipster to generate full stack applications, not only backend APIs. jhipster provides plenty of options as well. If we take a look at it, we can, we can see, we can choose Angular, React or Vue as our front end UI. And also, there are plenty of choices for the backend uh, features. You can integrate with a lot of NoSQL databases and various uh, uh, database support like Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle and plenty of those uh, choices. However, jhipster comes with some opinionated approach. For example, uh, jhipster assumes you most likely want to use Spring Security. If you want to use, uh, if you want to build a, a Spring Boot application without using Spring Security, I don't think jhipster provides that ability out of the box. And also, uh, along with uh, these many powerful features, the jhipster applications kind of a feel heavy. Uh, it has a lot of code uh, built in, and of course, they are all useful features. But at times, we might want to build something minimal and as you go on you want to add more and more feature instead of having a lot of code uh, add up the time so in that case uh, you might prefer something very lightweight and have a very bare minimum not as minimum as uh, spring initializer and uh, once you have a good starting point then onwards you just want to keep on adding new things so in that case uh, I have built a uh, generator for uh, generating Spring Boot based application. That, that's kind of a good fit for that use case. I have created this generator Spring Boot, which is human based application generator. 
to generate Spring Boot based applications with some commonly used configurations and features. And in order to install it, we need to have a node installed and uh, here are the uh, instructions that you can install this generator and use. And let us take a look at what kind of a features it provides. Uh, by default, it is going to generate a uh, Spring Boot application with char type packaging and also uh, configures cars cross origin resource sharing and also added uh, uh, open API based uh, Swagger documentation support. And it also provides the option to choose either MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB support. And you can also choose whether uh, you want to use Flyway or Liquibase for database migrations and uh, test container support for uh, doing the integration tests and it comes with JUnit 5 and, uh, and also uh, most of the times we use uh, some kind of a, a log aggregator like ELK uh, tech stack for doing the uh, centralized log aggregation and also uh, you might want to use Prometheus Grafana for monitoring. So uh, here we are generating Docker Compose based configuration so that you can uh, experiment in uh, local development. Also, uh, if you are building an application and want to deploy on uh, AWS, you might want to use local stack, which is kind of a mock AWS service provider. And also you might use Jenkins or uh, GitHub's GitHub actions for uh, doing CI CD. And also you uh, most likely uh, use some code quality checks tools like Sonar Cube and Jacoco code coveries. And, and also uh, there is this uh, nice tool, Google Java format, uh, which automatically uh, formats your source code into a uh, common uh, coding style. So uh, all these tools uh, comes built in when we generate a project using this generator Spring Boot. Now let us take a look at how we can use this generator. So uh, I have already installed this generator using these two commands. Now we can generate a new application using yo Spring Boot. So it is going to ask few questions uh, like what is the application name? Uh, I'm going to say boot maven demo and what is the package name com.sivalabs.myapp and we can choose whether we want to use Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB. I'll choose Postgres and uh, what type of DB migration tool I want to use. I'll choose Flyway and it also asks uh, do I want to generate ELK Docker configuration uh, also Prometheus Grafana configuration local stack. For now let's say uh, nothing and I can choose whether I want to use Maven or Gradle for build. I will go with Maven and it is going to generate all this uh, code. Now you can now I can CD into boot Maven demo and now if I run Maven clean verify it's going to fail because of the uh, coding style it is not matching with Google Java format. So now it also gives a hint that you can uh, do a spotless apply uh, code to automatically format it. M -E -N -W spotless colon apply. So with this um, Maven code, we can automatically format the entire source code. We don't have to do it manually. Now, if I run again, Maven clean verify, it should build successfully. So if you take a look at uh, the logs, we can see it is using Postgres Docker container because we are using uh, log, um, test container support for running the tests. Yeah, it builds successfully. Now let us take a look at the code.
So first of all, let us explore form.xml. So here, based on uh, the starters that we selected, like we want to uh, build a web REST API and we choose PostgreSQL and we selected the Flyway for database migration. And also, um, there are some libraries that are uh, commonly used, like we have Zalando's Problem Spring Web Starter. Th this is to handle uh, exceptions in a uh, uh, REST API. And also, we selected uh, Flyway for database migrations. And also, it already added uh, Spring Doc Open API UI which uh, we can use to generate uh, open API based Swagger documentation. And uh, in my experience, in most of the projects, we use common slang and common SIO um, for doing some uh, basic operations, file operations and things like that. So uh, they are already added here. And one of the uh, very good library for testing asynchronous code is availability. For example, you trigger some uh, async operation and you are expecting it to complete within certain timeout uh, time limit. So in that case, this library helps uh, great for writing tests. And also we are uh, configuring test containers, JUnit, Jupyter support. And because we have selected Postgres, it is already added Postgres test container support. In addition to that, there are a few um, uh, plugins that we commonly used in addition to Spring Boot Maven plugin. So here is a git commit id plugin which uh, we can use to generate uh, an endpoint in Actuator to display what is the uh, git information, what is the uh, commit id that we uh, deployed. So in addition to that, there is uh, Maven Surefire for running unit tests and then fail safe for running integration tests. And also uh, this properties Maven plugin that is used to uh, hook up uh, properties from Sonar project properties file. And also there is a spotless Maven plugin. As I mentioned, uh, this plugin is used to uh, apply Google Java format coding style across all our source code. And we have Jacoco Maven plugin uh, to uh, run the test and then verify the minimum code coverage. By default, it is configured to 80%. And uh, one of the uh, plugin that usually used for uh, verifying the OWASP uh, vulnerabilities is uh, dependency check Maven plugin. We can use this. And also there is Sonar uh, Maven plugin. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, these are all uh, commonly used plugins in uh, typically in most of the Spring Boot applications so that uh, you don't have to hunt for all these plugins and then configure. They come out of the box when you are using uh, Spring Boot generator. And also we have our Docker file um, based on the uh, a Java version it automatically configured what is the base image that we want to use and then uh, um, typical docker file configuration here and we have a minimal Jenkins uh, configuration and also here we have Maven uh, based um, github actions we have caching and then we build and run this command uh, for now, they are both same, um, master and developer feature branch, but um, typically we put more and more um, steps into um, master pipeline. Uh, most likely we want to build and deploy it to somewhere. So all that um, your project specific steps, you can add it here. And let us take a look at what kind of a Docker Compose configuration it generated. There are two files. One is Docker Compose. Because we selected um, Postgres as our DB, it configured the Postgres database. And there is Docker Compose app, which is our uh, application. And it automatically configured uh, what are the data source properties? If you are running uh, your application locally, you would like to point it to the 
database running in Docker Compose here. So those properties are already configured. And also let us take a look at the source code. So here it's a usual typical uh, starting main point, main entry point class. And here we have cars configuration. Let's say if you want to do some initialization logic, you can uh, write your logic over here. And there is a bare minimum uh, open API based Swagger documentation, but uh, you might want to add some security based configuration, things like that. But uh, this is the bare minimum uh, that is required. And also here in web MVC configuration, we have course configuration. And using Spring AOP, we can apply some logging, like suppose if you want to measure how much time it is taking for a uh, web endpoint or for a service operation, we can use this um, logging support, which uses AOP. Yep. So that is all here in the source main. And if we look into resources, there are various properties configured. So here, these are common things that we have and some logging configuration. And for sometimes uh, if you want to debug, uh, you want to check what kind of a database queries that are being generated and all that, you can enable this. And also there is uh, some actuator configuration, what kind of endpoints you want to uh, expose. And also there are plenty of uh, common uh, JPA configuration properties. Um, these are considered uh, a good practices while using Spring Data JPA. So these are configured already. And if you are trying to deploy your application, you might deploy your application on Heroku. Uh, you can enable Heroku um, profile and then let these properties uh, use to configure the database. And also you might want to run your application locally. So these are the properties that you can use and enable uh, local profile. Let us take a look at what is generated inside tests. So there is a uh, bare minimum uh, integration test. This is not a unit test, it's an integration test. It is extending abstract integration test. So uh, here, we selected uh, Postgres as our database, right? So here it is configured database, data DB container initializer. It is uh, configured to use Postgres SQL container and it automatically configures this uh, Spring data source properties. And this is for uh, uh, Jalando exception handling uh, we want to uh, use while running the test. So right now um, we, we have a bare minimum setup but not too bare minimum. There are few common properties that we typically use are already configured and everything is up and running. And also as we selected um, Postgres and also sometimes we might want to use some in-memory database so that you can quickly up and uh, run your application locally. So we have uh, H2 as a in-memory database support and Postgres uh, based on our selection. But right now they are empty. So if you run the application right now, uh, there is nothing much to see. MVNW um, Spring Boot colon run. And we can take a look at uh, Swagger documentation, localhost, edge Swagger, UI.html. But there is nothing much because we don't have any endpoints. So there is nothing much to see here. So uh, one another interesting uh, feature that is provided by uh, this generator is you can generate uh, a REST API with uh, basic CRUD operations as well. Let's say we want to generate a customer REST API. So we can just copy this command, stop the application, 
and run this. So here uh, we are running a sub generator uh, Spring Boot controller which automatically generates a JPI entity, a Spring Data JPI repository, a service and a REST controller. So they are all generated and also because we have selected Flyway as our database migrations, so this new database creation is already added into this uh, migration scripts and also uh, unit and integration tests are generated. Let us take a look at uh, here. Um, here we have customer JPI entity and um, primary key and a simple text column, uh, nothing much. The idea is you generate this and then add whatever columns you want to add as you go on. And let us take a look at repositories. Again, uh, Spring, uh, simple Spring Data JPA repository and service we have customer service right now there is nothing much logic here you simply delegate all these uh, typical CRUD operations to the repository but uh, once you have more and more business logic you might want to add here and then talk to the database and coming to rest controller we have um, a rest api endpoints uh, doing basic CRUD operations you want to get all customers, you want to uh, get a single customer by ID, you want to create a new customer, uh, update customer and delete customer. So the basic CRUD operations are already provided and a new set of uh, uh, Flyway migration scripts got added for this new uh, customer's table. Again, these are based on the uh, preliminary uh, entity configuration. We have only ID and text, but the idea is once you generate this, you add whatever the columns you want to add and then update these um, uh, scripts. And here uh, there is H2 version for in-memory support and uh, um, based on the selection, you have PostgreSQL or MySQL, whatever. So it generates um, database migrations for customer table here and also it generates uh, unit and integration test for uh, rest api so here we are having a web at web mvc based uh, test uh, these are called slice tests we are testing only the web layer here and again uh, doing all uh, tests for uh, typical CRUD operations and also there is integration test where we are extending this abstract integration test so that it will spin up um, Postgres database using test containers and run all these tests. So uh, very handy. Uh, the idea is it generates a skeleton and then you go and uh, extend it based on the functionality that you need. So yep, it's, uh, it comes a lot of uh, defaults and common configuration and then uh, gives a starting point and you can extend it further. And also, so far we have seen uh, uh, the bare minimum application using uh, Maven. Let us uh, take a look at uh, one more example. So again, I am going to uh, generate a Spring Boot application. This time I am going to use uh, Gradle as our build tool and also choose some additional features. Let's say my application name is boot gradle demo and package com not civil app start my app and this time I'm going to use MariaDB and I'm going to use Liquibase and I'll select all these three uh, ELK, uh, Docker configuration, Prometheus, Grafana configuration and local stack as well. And this time I'm going to select Gradle. Now I will CD into this project. Again, uh, this time we are using uh, Gradle. Let us try to build and see what happens. Mm, clean build. So here also we are using uh, Google Java format and uh, some some configuration class is not according to the standard so it is failing so what we can do we can format automatically so we can run this google java format which automatically formats and then we are trying to build
again uh, these uh, integration tests are using uh, test container support for uh, executing all the integration tests instead of using in memory databases it is highly uh, recommended to use the same database that you are going to use for production so again let us take a look at the code that is generated this time here uh, we are using uh, gradle configured all this uh, kind of a one to one mapping with maven based uh, features uh, same dependencies got added here uh, and same plugins and also uh, we have docker let us see um, what kind of a docker compose configuration again this time we have selected mariadb as our database so mariadb is configured and also we have selected local stack so local stack and by default we just enabled s3 and sqs and we have application uh, configured to use those mariadb properties and we have elk based uh, docker configuration like we have elastic search log stash and kibana and we have prometheus and grafana uh, configuration as well so uh, we, we can use this and uh, spin up these local containers and uh, and also there is a configuration to automatically import uh, dashboards grafana dashboards some of them are uh, open source dashboards that you can use and some are configured uh, explicitly and also we have prometheus configuration and yeah uh, also when we use uh, gradle as our build tool uh, these configurations and steps are generated accordingly yeah uh, i think we have covered uh, most of the features that is provided by uh, generator spring boot uh, give it a try and see uh, let me know what features you want to uh, add more and uh, yeah i'll try to add uh, if at all possible so we have looked at uh, jhipster and uh, generator spring boot options and there is one another uh, uh, tool that you can use to generate spring boot application that is called bootify so uh, you can go to bootify.io you can see you can read what kind of a features it is providing and you can explore and you can just start project and here you can provide some metadata similar to uh, spring initializer you can give project name and what is the build tool you want to use and uh, what is the language you want to use and uh, also you can choose what database you want to use uh, and hibernate uh, db generation strategy and whether you want to use aml or properties what is the java version you want to use whether you want to use uh, kind of a similar features that uh, we have in generator spring boot but the cool thing is um, here you can design the entities and their associations right here and then generate the project let's say uh, we have a user and whether we want to generate test endpoints or not we can select yes and then this is the primary key and uh, let's say we have email uh, yes it is required and it is unique and uh, let us add one more property of, of password and yes it is required and okay uh, let's save we have and let's say we have another entity called bookmark and we want to have rest endpoints for bookmark as well and it's the primary key and let's say you it has a title yes it is required and let's say we have bookmark url yes it is also required and save 
So now we have two entities. We can establish a relation among those two entities. Let's say uh, many to one, uh, which means many bookmarks can map to uh, a single user. Uh, one user can create many bookmarks. So let us say, um, let's give a name um, created by Uh, user from bookmark to user and make it as a required field save so here it will uh, reflect that uh, association here and then you can download the project and here there are a few other options maybe you want to have uh, DTOs instead of uh, using uh, entities and um, yeah, uh, I think these are the major features we have in free version. I think there is a paid version which supports uh, much more options there. Let us download it here. And even we can explore uh, here itself. So yeah, it is using uh, Gradle and we can see we selected uh, user and bookmark and their associations are created and there is uh, rest endpoints and there is a service layer here and there is a mapping between uh, DTO to uh, JPA entity as well so it's kind of a cool like uh, right in your uh, browser you can model your entities and establish associations and then generate uh, rest api that's really cool uh, i think uh, there is uh, let's go back uh, what are the features that we saw just now is uh, from uh, free version i think there is a paid uh, professional version which supports uh, much more features um, I would recommend you to go and explore this tool as well. But again, uh, as I mentioned, coming back to where we started, Spring Initializer is a revolutionary idea where it uh, started uh, taking developer experience of getting started experience to the whole new level. And uh, there are a lot of uh, other uh, frameworks that are following in a similar uh, approach. They have their own uh, application starters and um, again this is uh, fantastic but as i mentioned there are few times uh, where you need to have a little bit more configuration you want to have out of the box in that case you can choose one of the options that i uh, described and if you ask me what is my recommendation if you are building a complex and uh, complex application uh, which needs a lot of features like security, worth, and you want to talk to databases, NoSQL databases, and all that, I would highly recommend to go with jhipster. Uh, but if you want to start uh, minimal uh, and then uh, keep adding more and more features, uh, I would recommend to go with either uh, Generator Spring Boot or Bootify. Uh, both are kind of a good options to start with. And yeah, these are these are the things that I would like to uh, show and you may ask one question like how many times we are going to generate projects no not every day right uh, in our official work we don't generate new projects every day uh, once we set up a project that's it and then we uh, work on feature uh, implementations we add more and more features we don't start creating new and new projects every day but if you are like me who is a blogger or uh, if you are a uh, Udemy uh, course creator or you are writing a book so in that case you might require to create lots of applications in every day or every couple of days so in those scenarios these tools really really help a lot at least I believe so so uh, let me know uh, if you know any other options and uh, how do you feel about these options uh, let me know in the comments thank you thank you for watching the video let me know your feedback on this